um, my name is Sally. I, I teach English in the U.S. in community-based programs and in the community college. And I also trained with the amazing folks at Central Esperal Mana in Costa Rica. Um, and thank you uh, for this opportunity to act in solidarity with the people of Puerto Rico who've, who've been confronted with massive earthquakes this month. And to those of you who are awake and watching at 5 a.m. Puerto Rico time, it's 3 a.m. my time in the U.S., in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, it feels like a, a vigil to be awake with people um, for a purpose like this. So I'm glad you're with me. Um, it's my hope that the language classroom can be a place of community building for people from around the world. I teach primarily in community-based programs in the U.S. and one of the main ways I work toward this vision is to get to know learners. Um, this means not only learning their names and their interests and their learning preferences, but also knowing something about their realities, um, their cultural, social, economic realities, which may be very different from my own. English language learners in the U.S. have the benefit of being in, in an immersion environment um, with authentic and even urgent reasons to use English, um, but they face many challenges in school and society. Social isolation, which affects all of us in the U.S., um, shifts in family dynamics, economic struggles, discrimination, cultural displacement. These can be major factors in learners' lives and in their learning. So how can an instructor create an environment where everyone is open to listening and learning from each other in community? Who learns English in the US? Um, one, one way we can learn about our learners is by understanding who our learners are demographically. Um, in the US, 8% of people are considered limited English proficiency. Um, that's a loaded term, but um, it, it's a figure from the Institute of Migration Policy that gives you a sense of how many people in the US need to learn English or need to improve their English or might be found in, a, in, a, in an English language class. They might, we call them immigrants, we call them refugees, we call them transnationals, we call them expats. Um, they may or may not be with they may or may not have legal status. They they may be born in the U.S. Um, Nineteen, like a, a fifth of these people, a fifth of language learners, or people with limited language English proficiency, were actually born in the U.S. Um, many to immigrant parents. More than half of them, two thirds of them, are Latino or Spanish speaking. That means that most students also have an interest in learning some Spanish, uh, as they're likely to be interacting with. Spanish speakers in the workplace and in English classes. Um, I have students from a, a hill tribe in Myanmar who can say mucho trabajo, poquito dinero and know what it means because they work with people who've taught them some of their language. Regardless of their status, English language learners are likely to experience social isolation because of language differences. They might have a close community of people from their own language group, but it can be difficult to interact outside that group without a common language, without English. In a community-based English class, one of the most important ways to counteract social isolation is simply to get people working in pairs and in small groups. It gives people the opportunity to find common ground, even with limited language. Two older men from different parts of the world might find they share a sense of humor. They might laugh at the same things. They might share pictures of their children and grandchildren. Uh, a woman from East Africa in a headscarf has something in common with a Muslim woman from Burma or Albania. Shifts and stresses in family dynamics. Um, are another thing that can affect uh, learners' uh, learning. Um, a person's English language development, and, a, and conversely, a person's English language development can affect family relationships, particularly when children learn English faster than their parents, which often happens because they're in school all day and they're socializing in English as well. Um, and often they end up, children end up translating for their parents and taking on adult roles that can shift the balance of power in a family 
and put stress on parents who are struggling to raise children in a new environment where they have much less control over the situation. In a language classroom, family-friendly activities can go a long way toward easing these stresses. For example, um, one example of an activity that, that you can do in the classroom that translates to home life, um, for example, a single, a young single mother learned how to carve a pumpkin for Halloween in her English class. Uh, the next day she reported that she was thrilled to be able to lead her seven-year-old son in this activity rather than him telling her how to do it, which was often the case. Um, so shifting that dynamic in the family. Um, and you never know what language is going to empower people. Another parent shared with me that um, learning the word for lemonade uh, in a lesson on uh, food and drink, just that one word gave her power, gave her the confidence to order for herself in a restaurant um, rather than asking her 10 year old son to order for her. And it was an amazing moment of empowerment for her. Economic struggles are a reality in a country where a full-time job does not guarantee a livable wage. Getting and holding on to a job requires not just English, but a lot of soft skills that adults need to know. Um, in the language classroom, focusing on workplace cultural issues, um, things like making eye contact um, when you speak with someone, expectations around absences, um, safety and hygiene concerns. These are all things that can be incorporated into language lessons and they also help contextualize the language so that it's meaningful and useful to a learner who is working or who is looking for work in an American workplace. And these are also things that that often transcend language. Someone with very little English can still show these skills and still use them to stay employed and get employment. It's also a good idea to pay attention to the gifts that learners bring to the classroom and encourage them to advise each other. Um, I'd I, I'm going to share a story about a student who came to my classroom bearing the gift of a mango carved into a complex flower. Um, Clearly he had knife skills. Um, it turned out he was a skilled chef, but he had, and a new arrival, and um, new arrivals get eight months, uh, a single man gets eight months to be economically self-efficient, self-sufficient, and this young man um, did not want to be on public assistance. He was very proud, so he took the first job that his social worker offered him, which was screwing on the tops of perfume bottles in a factory. Um, in the factory, his hands were getting numb from this repetitive work. Um, and I had a feeling this was not a great idea for him because um, he was a skilled chef. Um, his, with the opportunity to talk with his fellow students in class, um, we used the classroom to brainstorm and advise him on what to do. And his students who had been in similar situations actually actually encouraged him and motivated him to take a risk and leave that job and work on finding something in a restaurant that suited his skills. He's now the lead chef in a major hotel restaurant and has been there for over five years. Discrimination is a sad and dangerous fact of life for too many people of color and people who don't speak English in the US. In the language classroom, bringing in guest speakers um, can be a way to address this issue, particularly speakers from law enforcement um, or lawmakers, um, firefighters, health professionals. Using interpreters gives learners a chance to ask questions. It also works in the opposite direction. When these police officers and firefighters come into our classroom and meet um, meet learners and meet people from the communities they serve, they come away with a deeper understanding of who we all are as people and our, our commonalities and our, our shared worries and concerns and struggles. 
not everyone who comes to live in the U.S. comes voluntarily, um, and cultural displacement and loss can have a profound effect on learning. Uh, depression and uh, it can be a big factor. Um, highlighting learner stories, using their own stories and images as texts for language learning and sharing can help them appreciate their own and others' achievements and struggles. Culture sharing within the classroom, which is a related thing, and with the greater community can help learners build relationships outside the classroom. Potlucks and fashion shows and talent shows are common ways to do this, but one school started a film series showcasing movies about immigrant cultures and issues, and they opened it up to the wider community. So it was a way to give learners an opportunity to be seen in a positive light, where the focus is not on what they lack, but what they bring with them. And last, I want to end by um, uh, sharing a story from a community garden. A uh, community garden can also be a classroom. Uh, in the US, the community gardens are teaching places um, where immigrants and refugees and transnationals of all kinds can set down roots and share their expertise with each other on equal footing on common ground. Oh, I lost my picture there. Um, so pair work, group work, family-friendly activities, soft skills, guest speakers, culture sharing, learner stories, these are all things that can be done in the English language classroom to counteract some of the negative effects of things like social isolation that, that learners face. And this, these are ways we can build community and create a positive environment for learning. Thanks for listening.